Hello, it's Laura. Today we're going to be reading again. Men are like waffles and men are like spaghetti. Part four. Stay in the box. Ladies, when it's your husband's turn to talk, you need to practice staying in the box he wants to open. You see, when he brings up an issue for discussion, he actually intends to talk about that issue. So when he says to you, we need to talk about our finances, he most likely wants to have a financial conversation. If he says he wants to talk about your upcoming vacation, he probably wants to talk about your vacation and so on. He is hoping this time will be different. He wants to have what he considers to be a reasonable conversation with you. He wants it to stay on track. He wants to identify the problem, evaluate the options, commit to a solution, and see it work out. A problem develops because you immediately recognize all the issues that are related to the one he brought up. It is as if you can see every box that he's touching, the box he has opened. You feel the need to open all the boxes because they are relevant to the discussion. If you don't open them, you're afraid that the loose ends will never be addressed. You know that it has backfired in the past, but you haven't ever really understood why, so you try again. The problem is we women are very impatient listeners. We often think that because men don't process life the way we do, they are unfeeling and uncaring. But nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is, we never let them stay in one box long enough to discover their feelings. One cartoon I saw explains how we usually view men and their feelings. Anise came into the room where her uncle was sitting in his recliner. He had done some favors for her. She wanted to express her thanks. The young woman rambled on and on. Thank you so much. You're always come through for me. What would I do without you? The uncle finally took a business card out of his pocket, gave it to his niece and said, if you take this down to the petroleum store, they will give you 10% off of your petroleum. His wife witnessed the interaction and later said, What were you doing? She was pouring her heart out to you and you gave her a business card? Have you no feelings? Oh, I have feelings. I was afraid she would go on and try to hug me. I was scared it was going to go on and on and I was happy when it was over. I have feelings. If we stay focused on one topic and resist the urge to open up all the surrounding boxes, we buy our men the emotional time they need to work their way down through the layers of the box. They then trust us to open up to the well emotions that are deep in that box. It's a lot like drilling for oil. When you drill deep enough, you can reach a, va a valuable gusher. We ladies must remember that we are drilling for valuable treasure, not irritating a prisoner. Patient listening will periodically bring the emotions to the surface we love to see. I, Pam, was visiting with a young lady in our church who was engaged to be married. She asked if she could speak with me because she was concerned about their upcoming marriage. She loved her fian fiancé deeply, but she was afraid that he was a kind of shallow. She, he loved cars and spent most of his free time in the garage working on the next automobile project he had lined up. He was kind to her and respected the things she had, but he seemed to be uh, dominated by cars. Pam, I love him. What am I supposed to do? How can I know for sure? Go into the garage, I enthousi enthusiastically told her. It's obvious this is his favorite box. He feels comfortable there. Meet him there and see what happens. 
Well, two weeks later, I saw her again, and she was excited. She had taken some lemonade into the garage where he was working on his cars and just sat and listened to him. He was talking about torquing this and tweaking that. He was using vocabulary like horsepower and compression, words that were meaningless to her. She described how her eyes were rolling back in her head from boredom when he suddenly dropped into a new box. Thank you so much for caring about me he said as he gave her a quick kiss on the cheek. No one has ever taken the time to listen to me like you. You are the only person I have ever known who has let me go on and on about my cars without getting bored. <laughs> I can picture myself growing old with you. We are going to have a great life together. With that, he gave her a big hug and went back to working on his car. She was so touched by the connection she received after the ordeal of listening that she said to me, Pam, I have never leaving the garage ever again. <laughs> Next topic, the emergency shut off valve, page 33. When your husband started the conversation, there was one problem on the table to be solved. When you opened the second box, there were two problems. When you opened the third box, there were three, and so on. Every man has his own limit of how many problems he can deal with at once. Because he started the conversation, he is in the problem-solving mode, and so very, and so ev every box you open feels like a separate problem to him. At some point, he crosses the line of how many issues he can handle and he gets overwhelmed. A man's reactions to being overwhelmed can be varied, but they seem to fall into two categories. He either shuts down or gets angry. If your husband tendencies to shut down, he may walk away from conversation or give you the silent treatment. He feels there's no way he can succeed, so he loses motivation. He doesn't know how long to keep up with you and he thinks he's going to lose a conversation. The only way he can get on level playing ground with you is to bail out. If your husband's tendency is to get angry, he might throw accusations at you, storm out of the house and disappear for a while, or aggressively call off the conversation by telling you to stop talking. The whole time he's telling himself he should not be this angry, but he feels lost and doesn't know how to recover his composure. Rather than expose his lack of control, he protects himself from any further feelings of inadequacy by becoming upset. The end result of either of these approaches is failed communication. Next topic. Don't make me you. Don't make me you. Page 34. Instead of taking turns listening to each other, most couples spend their time trying to change one another. As his wife is breaking down the walls that allow him to separate the issues in his life, he's trying to cut up her spaghetti into squares. They are sincerely trying to make sense of each other, but they only end up confusing one another more. It's as if she's putting marinara sauce on the waffles and he's putting syrup on the spaghetti of their lives. Taking turns may be hard work, but not taking turns is agonizing. <laughs> for the couple who wants to find a way to make their differences work for them in communication, they must become good listeners. The amazing thing is that the same listening techniques work for both sides. For a man who wants to be able to travel in conversation with his wife, he must be focused listener. For his wife, who wants to be able to camp in the same box as her husband is in, she must be a focused listener. First, let's take a look at what listening is not. I'm going to end there. The next topic is listening is not an attempt to understand the opposite sex. Thanks for listening. <laughs>